This is truly a game changer. It means more lives saved. It means taking potentially preventable deaths and preventing them. This program will save lives. All eyes are on One Blood as a groundbreaking program expands enabling emergency first responders to give blood transfusions at the scene of an incident. A woman who is alive today because of the program is sharing her story. I was basically dying on scene. Plus, we'll go behind the scenes at One Blood for an up-close look at what the team does to determine which donations can be used on the ambulances. This innovative, life-saving initiative is the focus of this edition of the Share Your Power podcast. Every second counts for a trauma patient in need of a blood transfusion. This is the Share Your Power podcast, and I am Pat Michaels. Hi, and I'm Susan Forbes. Thanks so much for joining us. You know, we have a really fascinating show to share with you today, and it's something that I think most people are unaware of. So did you know that in some parts of One Blood Service Area, paramedics are able to provide blood transfusions to trauma patients at the scene of an incident before the patient arrives at the hospital. Yeah, you know what they're doing? They're transfusing O positive whole blood. And not only is it a fascinating program, but it also greatly increases a trauma patient's chance of survival. You know, usually when a donor donates whole blood, that donation is then brought back to One Blood's biologics department, and it goes into a process where it is separated into the different components. So in the end, the red cells go to one patient, the platelets go to another, and the plasma to a third. This is why we always say one donation can mm -hmm. save up to three lives. But with the new whole blood program, that separation does not happen, and the whole donation is what's being transfused to trauma patients. Yeah, and Susan, the pre-hospital whole blood program is up and running, and it's in a few locations in one blood service areas. And recently, Orange County Fire Rescue launched the program in the Orlando area. And you know, just a few weeks after the program started, amazingly, it, it went right into action and it helped save this woman's life. My kids would have lost their mom. And I'm just, I'm just grateful. Now you will hear Lori McMinn's fascinating story in just a few minutes. Yeah, but first we want to explain to you how the pre-hospital whole blood program works. This is truly a game changer. Dr. Tracy Zito, the trauma medical director at Orlando Regional Medical Center, Orlando's only level one trauma center, says the new whole blood program will save trauma patients' lives. What that bleeding human body needs to keep it alive is blood. Having bread available to these highly trained responders in the field allows patients that would otherwise have potentially died or have gotten to the hospital near death to get there in much better condition and have a much higher chance of survival. The faster a trauma patient can receive blood, the better chance they will survive. Honestly, some of the most frustrating and heartbreaking moments in my career have been witnessing patients dying after injury when it was potentially preventable. Deaths from hemorrhage or massive bleeding have occurred too many times. Type O blood can be given to any patient, regardless of their blood type. Orange County Fire Rescue Assistant Chief Scott Egan says that will help the program save lives. By providing blood to a patient before arriving to the hospital, we are greatly increasing the outcome of life expectancy. This program will save lives. The units are placed strategically on ambulances called captain units throughout Orange County. Paramedic Brandon Ix explains how the state-of-the-art equipment helps make sure the blood is ready at any time for an emergency transfusion. These are our rapid infusers. These are the actual devices that administer the blood, the ability to give it rapidly. Um, so these can give a whole unit of blood in a matter of seconds. That's yeah, amazing, Susan, that they are able to give that whole unit of blood that quickly. It really is. And, and if you're wondering what a unit of blood is, it's a, it's a pint of blood. And, and on average, we have anywhere about eight to 10 pints of blood in our bodies. Yeah, in order for the program to work, we need O positive donors. That's right, and that's about 38% of the population out there has O positive blood. So if you have O positive blood, please make blood donation a habit. Uh, you're playing a very important role in the blood supply and very important role in this particular program. And we're gonna to explain to you why they need O positive donors in just a few minutes. And just a few weeks after the program launched, it saved a wife and a mother of six children. 
in a horrible car accident. Yeah, the, the pictures were horrible of that accident. And, you know, just a couple of days after getting out of the hospital, she wanted to go before the cameras and meet that first responder who gave her that first unit of blood. And she was still using a walker, mm -hmm. um, but she made it out there and she wanted to say thank you. Yeah, I can remember it very well. It was very emotional. You know, all the media showed up. Our reporter, Carmen Lofton, has the emotional details. A woman who received a whole blood transfusion after a traumatic accident met the first responders who helped save her life. My kids would have lost their mom. And I'm just, I'm just grateful. This is Lori McMinn, a wife and mother of six. She's out of the hospital and full of gratitude after a traumatic car accident nearly claimed her life. Orange County Fire Rescue Captain Diana Alexander and her team were first to arrive on scene. You know, I'm glad this program was implemented. You were able to make that decision to get me blood. Yeah. To help save my life. Yeah. Captain Alexander administered the transfusion to Lori on the spot due to internal injuries. That whole blood was available thanks to a new pre-hospital whole blood program that had launched just weeks before her accident. You definitely showed a remarkable improvement even as we got to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So we, we knew the efforts that we were doing uh, were, were fruitful. Fine. I was bleeding because my spleen was lacerated and it was bleeding into my abdomen. and I was basically dying on scene. I know if it wasn't for her, being, her and her team being able to assess me and the blood you guys gave them, I wouldn't be here today. Chief Surgical Resident at ORMC, Dr. Jacqueline Sion, says that transfusion on scene was the most important part of her care. Um, it's really what stabilized her coming into the hospital and then once she got to the hospital. It allowed us to continue to treat her without having to take her to surgery emergently and so she's very lucky. I, said, I was like, I don't know who saved me, but they saved me. People who do give blood know I, I'm living proof you save lives. This is proof of the power of blood donors. Um, they saved Lori's life. You know, she had one unit of blood transfused on the scene, and then when she got to Orlando Regional Medical Center, she was transfused two more. That's right. I mean, in all, that is three whole blood transfusions. So let's think about that. That is three people, three O yep. positive blood donors who helped save this woman's life. I mean, in an instant, any one of us could be Lori, okay? In an instant, we find ourselves on the receiving end of a blood transfusion. These are not things that you plan. Uh, she didn't wake up that morning thinking she's gonna be saved no. by blood donors. She's involved in a trauma situation, and the next thing you know, she's receiving blood transfusions to save her life. Uh, you know, this is why the blood supply cannot be taken for granted. That's absolutely right. Because, you know, one in three of us mm -hmm. will need a blood transfusion at some point in our life. You may need one unit, you may, may need a hundred units. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what's going on, but this is how prevalent it is. Every two seconds in this country, somebody is receiving a blood transfusion. Yeah, and it's amazing that this program works so well. The whole blood donations must be very specific, O positive donations. And in addition to that, they need to be what is called low titer, right, Susan? That's right, low titer. So you may be asking mm -hmm. yourself, what is low titer? And who determines which blood donations can be used on these ambulances to treat these trauma patients? Well, that is where one blood's product quality control team comes into play. It's a laboratory that we have here at One Blood, and the team down there is doing very specific testing on these O positive donations to determine which donations can be used to help trauma patients. Meticulous work taking place around the clock in One Blood's product quality control lab. Testing is underway to determine which donations can be used for low titer whole blood transfusions. To pass the test, it's all about antibodies. Our bodies naturally produce antibodies that are the opposite of our ABO blood type. So for example, a person who's type O produces both A and B antibodies. The team in the product quality control lab is doing specific titer testing to determine how strong those A and B antibodies are. Low titer means that the strength of the A and B antibodies is low enough or it's below an acceptable detectable limit that that blood can be transfused safely 
to any patient regardless of their blood type. Only O positive whole blood donations that have specific low levels of A and B antibodies can be labeled as low titer and transfused as whole blood to trauma patients. We watched as a licensed one blood medical technologist perform the titer testing on two different O positive whole blood donations. The first stop is the centrifuge. This is where a sample of the donation is put into a test tube and is spun down to separate the red blood cells from the plasma portion of the blood. After one minute, the sample is removed from the centrifuge and two microliters of the plasma is mixed with a solution. Next, the A and B red blood cells are added to each tube and a timer is set for five minutes. When the five minutes are up, the samples take another spin in the centrifuge for 30 seconds. And then it's the moment of truth. It's completely clear. It's the negative for anti-A and anti-B. A negative result means this donation can be labeled and used as a low titer whole blood unit. Some donations pass the test, but others do not. The unit is positive for cell B. In this donation, the cells are clumping together and that is the indicator of a positive reaction. So the titer of B on this O positive whole blood unit is too high That's for components. Called, yes, exactly. A specially trained eye able to spot correct results is crucial. For me, it's a lot of responsibility because you have to make sure that you are reporting the correct, the correct result. You know, it begs the question, Susan, why are they testing the plasma? They're testing the plasma portion of these uh, whole blood donations because that's where our antibodies live, okay? Antibodies, um, we make antibodies to all types of things. Um, if you've ever had a vaccine, uh, if you've had a flu or a sort of some sort of virus, those antibodies forever live in the plasma portion of your blood. That's where they go. I don't know why they go there, but that's where they go, <laughs> exactly okay? Right. And that's where they live. <laughs> and, and that's what they're testing down in the lab is they're testing the strength of those antibodies antibodies of the blood type antibody because that's the only antibody that our body naturally makes on its own is your blood type antibody. So uh, you heard him say in the story, if you're type O, then you make an antibody, um, A and B antibody if you're type O. Well, I'm A negative, okay? So this is a good example of I'm A negative. If I was to receive O positive whole blood donation, um, the titer level of the A and B antibody and that O donation needs to be low enough that my body will not detect it and so that I can receive it safely. Uh, so that's what they're doing down there. So uh, an A negative person can then receive an O positive whole blood donation because the strength of that antibody will not be detected. Um, and, and that's such crucial work that's going on in our laboratories. Mm -hmm. You know, these are really unsung heroes mm -hmm. behind the scenes at the blood center Every who are day. doing this crucial testing. Uh, and it's, they, you know, th th that's a lot of responsibility to be looking at that to make sure that you, you know, are, are know which donations can move on as whole blood yep. donations yep. and which ones cannot. Okay, so what about the donations that don't pass the titer test? They can't be used for the whole blood transfusion, but they can still be used to help save lives. Yes, they simply go back to One Blood's biologics department where the team will separate those donations into the different components of red cells, platelets, and plasma. And then each component will be used to help patients that are compatible with that mm -hmm. donor. Why are we so specific? to O positive when O negative is the universal donor? Mm -hmm. Well, O negative donors are the universal donors for red blood cells, but this is not just the red cell. This is the whole donation. That's right. You know, O negative, um, it could be used as a whole mm -hmm. blood donation. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they could do it, but only 7% of the population has O negative blood. Right. So, uh, you know, fewer people have O negative. It is definitely used uh, to help trauma patients. It's being used right now in hospitals around the world to help save trauma patients' lives right now. Uh, but for this program, O positive is being used because it too can be used in a trauma situation as long as that tighter level is low enough, and that's the testing that's going on. But even if O negative was going to be used as a whole blood donation, it too would have to be tested for that low titer because uh, O negative donors also have a and B antibodies. So, uh, but we're not using O negative in this case, but O negative donors are 
playing a huge role in the blood supply. So if you have O negative yep. blood, please donate. You are helping trauma patients. You're also helping O negative donors because that's the only blood that's that right. you can receive if you have O negative. Uh, so it's important that O negative donors continue to donate. You play a huge role in the blood supply. Absolutely, you do. And if you are type O positive, please make a blood donation a habit. And all blood types are also needed all the time anyway. Absolutely. So if you're eligible, give. Yes, all blood types, all the time. And you can make an appointment very easily right there at oneblood.org. Uh, you can make an appointment, find a big red bus blood drive or a donor center near you. Uh, and if you're listening to us outside of the One Blood service area, you know, there's a blood center near you, I promise you. And they would be very happy to see you. So please, uh, if you've never donated before, please uh, start donating. It's a simple, simple process. Uh, and you'll be making a big impact on the blood supply and literally helping give somebody a second chance to live. And save lives, no doubt about it. We will talk with you next time on the Share Your Power podcast.